أصحاب الدولة والمعالي والسعادة الحضور الكرام نلتقي في هذه الليلة بمحاضرة تناقش واحد من أكثر الاهتمامات التي شغلت الأردنيين وعلى جميع المستويات إنه التعليم أو مستقبل بلدنا وأبنائنا في محاضرة اليوم سنلتقي بضيفنا لوري تومي خبير التعليم من فنلندا وهو البلد صاحب التجربة الاستثنائية في التعليم فمنذ منتصف سبعينيات القرن الماضي وضعت فنلندا سياسات جديدة استهدفت من خلالها جميع أركان عملية التعليم من معلمين وطلبة ومناهج وبيئة مدرسية ما أدى إلى نهضة كبيرة وضعت البلد في أعلى هرم الدول من حيث جودة التعليم ورغم أن السياسات والبرامج كانت شاملة لجميع أركان عملية التعليم إلا أن إعادة الاعتبار للمعلم الذي يعد عنصرا أساسيا في هذه العملية كان له أكبر الأثر في عملية التنمية تلك وذلك من خلال صقله أكاديميا ومعرفيا وأيضا من خلال تحسين مستواه المعيشي وقيمته الاجتماعية انطلق في الأردن الجدل حول واقع التعليم منذ أكثر من عقدين أشر كثيرون على مواضع خلل يمكن للراسم السياسات أن يضع علاجات لها ورغم كثيرا من الخطط التي تم تنفيذها على مدار السنوات إلا أننا حتى اليوم لم نتمكن من أن نعاود الطريقة صعودا في مسار التعليم الحضور الكريم إن مؤسسة عبد الحميد شومان التي تنظم هذه الفعالية هي مؤسسة تعنى بتطوير المجتمع ككل ونحن نعلم أن الأساس لأي تطوير لا بد أن يستند إلى تعليم ذي جودة عالية من أجل أن نلحق بركب الدول التي قطعت شوطا كبيرا في هذا المجال وعززت الجوانب البحثية والإبداع والابتكار لدى أفرادها إن هذه الفعالية تأتي في سياق محور كامل حول التعليم بدأت به مؤسسة شومان منذ أشهر عديدة وتنوي مواصلته في سبيل صنع, صنع فرق حقيقي في مستقبل بلدنا الحضور الكريم الاطلاع على تجارب الآخرين ومحاولة فهم الخطوات التي ابتكروها والطرق التي ساروا عليها من الممكن أن يؤدي إلى تقصير طريق التجارب لدينا مع التأكيد على أنه مهما استفدنا من تجارب الآخرين إلا أنه لا بد من بناء نموذجنا الخاص لتطوير التعليم في بلدنا رحبوا معي بالدكتور لوري تومي ويدير الحوار الدكتور بشير شحادة شكرا شكرا لسعادة الأستاذة فالنتينا قسيسية بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أصحاب الدولة والمعالي والسعادة والعطوفة السيدات والسادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأسعد الله مساءكم بكل خير وأهلا وسهلا بكم اليوم في ضمن فعاليات منتدى شومان الثقافي ومحاضرة تحت عنوان تجربة التعليم في فنلندا الصعود إلى القمة للبروفيسور لاوري تومي لا أحد يشك اليوم أن فنلندا تحتل مركز الصدارة في مجال التعليم حسب نظام التقييم الدولي بعد أن تمكنت من تحقيق نتائج باهرة جعلت العالم المتقدم يقف مذهولا أمام إنجازاتها التربوية والتعليمية وتجربتها الفريدة من نوعها والتي أصبحت نموذجا عالميا في تبني نظام الجودة في التعليم فما هو سر نجاح هذه التجربة وكيف تحققت معجزة التعليم في كوكب فنلندا ومن سيحدثنا عن هذا هو البروفيسور لوري تومي وهو أستاذ في الاقتصاد وإدارة الأعمال تولى منصب في الوكالة الوطنية الفنلندية للتعليم في عام 2007 17 لوري رائدا في تطوير التعليم الفنلندي من خلال تقلده منصب الرئيس التنفيذي لشركته الخاصة ونائب رئيس جامعة هاجا هيليا للعلوم التطبيقية تم تكليفه من قبل وزارة التعليم والثقافة الفنلندية بداية 2017 بقيادة مشروع تطوير نموذج التشغيل لبرنامج التعليم الفنلندي لوري خبير في الإدارة التعليمية والإدارة الاستراتيجية والكفاءة بالإضافة إلى إدارة الابتكار هو حاصل على درجة الدكتوراه في الإدارة الاستراتيجية من جامعة فاسا فنلندا قام بقيادة وإدارة العديد من العمليات الاستراتيجية في كل من القطاعين العام والخاص وهو مؤلف للعديد من, من الكتب والبحوث العلمية المنشورة
وقد تمت دعوته كمتحدث رئيس في العديد من المؤتمرات الدولية في مواضيع عدة مثل التعليم الفنلندي والتعليم العالي والإدارة الاستراتيجية والابتكار التعليمي وأترك الحديث الآن لبروفيسور لاوري Thank you very much, Your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my pleasure to share some of the uh, main ideas uh, on the experience of Finnish education. Uh, I would like to express my warmest thanks also to Shoman Foundation to organizing this event and inviting us to share and learn also together. So we see always that education is all about collaboration, co-creation, and sharing. So uh, that's something I would like to do today. So uh, my, my topic, uh, Finland's journey to become one of the best educational countries in the world is, is actually all about the journey. During this uh, a short time, I have been able to visit your excellent and nice and very warm country uh, and first time in, in Jordania. So uh, we have shared already many, many ideas and discussed about education and educational development. So uh, in Finland uh, there has been a quite long journey to, to reach this uh, position in which we are today. So. Uh, as you all know, Finland is a very small Scandinavian country, having only about 5.6 million inhabitants. So we are smaller than your country. Uh, and uh, last year we celebrated our 100 years uh, anniversary of our independence. And on those days, 100 years ago, Finland was one of the poorest countries in the world. So it has taken about 100 years to develop the society, to reach these kind of uh, positions in, in many, many rankings, to become one of the richest country, one of the most innovative country in the world, and one of the most well-functioning country uh, in the world. So uh, that uh, development would not have happened without understanding that education and education and educate all of the citizens is the key to the success of the society. And uh, as I said, the journey has been quite long. Uh, and also uh, we see that uh, the continuous development of education system is the key for the success, not only on education, but also on, on societal level. Uh, Finnish elementary school system uh, dates back to the year 866, when the Basic Education Act was launched, and elementary school became voluntary to all of the citizens. That, on those days, that clever decision has led actually to the situation which we see today, that teacher's profession is one of the main respected uh, professions uh, in, in Finland. Teachers keep, became very important uh, in the villages and in the towns wherever the school was set up. So the school was not only for the learning or teaching, it was a kind of center of the society also to bring people and also the teacher's role was widened and not only to be a teacher but also to, to uh, create the society around the schools. And today we see also that the school is a learning community and that that decision, that uh, quite, quite minor decision made about 150 years ago has been one of the starting points for the success. Uh, in 1970 we got the independence and a, a couple of years later 
1921, uh, the attending of the basic education became compulsory. And then uh, if we see how the journey goes on, after the World War II, Finland was still one of the poorest countries in, in the world and in, in Europe. But one uh, decision was also made that all of the children were given a free school meal. So the nutrition was seen very important to be a base for the learning. And it's still very important today in Finland. It has been one of the practical innovations which uh, are needed by, by the society. So uh, these kind of steps have been there. And in 1970, a huge reform in Finnish education system was launched and a new comprehensive school uh, was set up. A nine year long compulsory education was then founded and it uh, actually was based on the principle of equality. Before that, uh, the children were actually uh, divided into two sections to uh, those who uh, were able to take the academic route and to those who were then guided to the uh, vocational professions. But today we see that the inter-education system there is uh, important that there are no dead ends. So whenever you study, you can always make different choices according to your motivation and according to your needs. And this kind of uh, reform has reflected also for today's development of our education system. Uh, and uh, since 1980s, the education reforms have taken the steps of uh, about 10 years. Uh, and uh, also today, even though the whole reform takes about 10 years, meaning that all of the grades, all of the students have reached the, uh, and gone through the whole uh, renewed system, we see that the continuous development is needed. So the flexibility in the education system is one of the basic base ideas which have been stated in the education system. So today uh, we see uh, also the results uh, from our whole nation. 87% uh, of our citizens hold at least an upper secondary education degree and 42% have a uh, higher education degree. And of course, today we have new visions, I will share them also with you. So the system uh, runs quite well and got very good results. And we have seen also the results in, in the PISA rankings. Finland be one of the top six countries still today. But then going to the roots of uh, our education system and educational administration. So uh, our Minister of Education and Culture is responsible, of course, on, on the educational policy. And then uh, the agency from which I come from, Finnish National Agency for Education, is today a developmental agency for education operating under uh, Minister of Education and Culture. This agency used to be in, still in 1970s, the uh, agency for inspection, inspection of all of the schools around Finland. But on those days, also one of the most and best uh, decisions for the Finnish education system were made that uh, each of the teachers need to have at least master's level education. So that competence based on the teachers were actually leading to the new step in our education system. Uh, our politicians and our educational authorities uh, saw actually that inspection is no more needed because there, is, there are competent teachers, competent principals in the schools. They can operate 
on the best possible way already. So at the national agency was transport to become a developmental agency. An agency which is responsible on the educational reforms, it's responsible to provide guidelines and support also for the teachers and, and principals in Finland, but wide autonomy on local level was then set up. So the cities and municipalities have their autonomy uh, on, the, on the decisions how the education is set up in, in their region. And also, what is more uh, also important is that the schools are autonomous also. So the, on the school level, yeah, and even the teachers in the classroom can make the, their own uh, decisions how the education could be organized. And as we today discuss more like educational design, how the educational uh, environment and how the educational subsets and the learning process will be produced. And uh, today, uh, our new vision for education is that everyone can grow to his or her own potential. And that's uh, the leading idea to all of the schools, of all of the teachers, all of the authorities that uh, in our national core curriculum, in our uh, national vocational standards, and in our higher education, the individual aspect is needed to be taken into account. So uh, then uh, this vision has uh, created the base to the next uh, further steps in our educational systems and reforms. I will come back to those a bit uh, later in my presentation. Uh, but to continue about uh, some basic ideas or principles in, uh, of learning in Finland, uh, I would like to share the conception of learning with you next. There are five kind of guiding principles for our education system, which are also guidelines for teachers in the classroom. So we see that uh, the student or children will have an active role in, in the learning process. So it's not more and not anymore a kind of top-down process that the teacher in, in the front of classroom is telling uh, the students who are sitting. So uh, this setting is uh, something which is uh, not the idea, but the idea is to have an active role of the learners. But also learning is also thinking, so I, I think that you are, can grasp the idea also here today to share the ideas to think about and, and discuss and have dialogue on, on these issues we discussed today. So learning takes place through interaction, and that's something in which we believe a lot. So the interaction between, not only between uh, the teachers and students, but also the students together, the teachers together, and also the wider community together. So they need to be kind of uh, interaction and a lot of interaction in the learning process. But to come also to the fact that Finland has also been ranked as, as one of the most happy and even happiest country in the world. So we also highlight in education that the joy of learning is important. The joy is needed in order to be creative, in order to be innovative, and in order to learn. So uh, that's also something in which we also uh, today are creating more and more support also for the schools and teachers to uh, also keep uh, on, on understanding and using the idea of joy of learning. So positive emotional experiences are important. And uh, also to come back to the 
ever-changing world, uh, also the learning to learn skills are needed. And also what we highlight is the importance that students are self-directed uh, and they also uh, take responsible for their own learning process. So these guidelines are covering all of the levels of Finnish education. And uh, next I would like to come to the, the holistic picture of our educational system. The system with emphasis today is on lifelong learning. And if you look at uh, on, on the system and the slide, you can see that there are no dead ends. So whatever path you choose uh, during your studies, you can always also make changes. So that, that has been one of the bases. Uh, and also, there, uh, thinking about the system, we are today quite happy uh, on the system, which have been now uh, created in a way that is on a continuous developmental process. So uh, all of the levels have been under reform during the past few years. One of the latest ones was the new national co curriculum for basic education, and today it's fully implemented. And as I said, it's fully implemented. It means also that uh, it can be adjusted. On annual basis, some adjustments are able to be made. Uh, the latest one in our education system is the new reform on pre-primary education and early childhood education. We see that the earliest years of the child actually creates the base for the future success and, and also the opportunities to learn and to learn uh, the learning to learn skills. Uh, the newest uh, curriculum is actually the first uh, comprehensive uh, curriculum for early childhood education in Finland. And it's based on, on the idea of the individuality. So each of the child need to have a plan for the individual growth. And this new curriculum and this new reform has also changed uh, the law uh, on uh, what is uh, the teacher's competence level needed in the sector. So all teachers working on uh, in the early childhood education and pre-primary education will have in the future also master's level education. In our education system, we have only one national test. Uh, it's actually up after general upper secondary education, which uh, is a part to the higher education studies. Matriculation examination is uh, one of the link between the higher education studies and our new reform will actually raise the importance of this uh, examination uh, as a kind of flexible leading path to the higher, highest education after the studies. The reform also consists of the idea that the higher education institutes uh, also need to uh, collaborate more with, with these institutes providing this upper secondary education. So uh, the universities and universities of applied sciences are able to provide courses also on this level in order for the students to uh, also to have uh, insight into studies to which they most likely will then go later on. And then uh, we have the vocational education and training, which has also gone through a reform. In Finland, uh, the adult vocational education and training and uh, the training for youngsters are today integrated. They used to be a separate, uh, separately stated in our system. And this means that uh, to become a professional in, in the working life is not dependent on the age. 
So uh, the idea is that the continuous learning and lifelong learning opportunities can be provided in, uh, for all uh, who are willing and motivated to, to become professionals in the working life. In Finland, one of the visions have been also that we need in our society very good professionals in the working life uh, and experts on their own professions. And not all of the students need to go to the traditional academic path. And uh, this vision is almost reached. It used to be in 20 years ago so that more, more and more students were going to the traditional path and working life was uh, actually in the trouble finding the best professionals to work in the working places and in industry. But this change has now happened and the image of vocational education training is, is very high today. And it has also been and one of the secrets in behind has been to uh, focus on teachers' competencies. So also for the teachers, uh, teaching in vocational education and training need to have master's degree and also specific training. If they come directly from the working life, they will provide the specific pedagogical training to become teachers in this sector. So this uh, balance is almost reached, but we still have something to do because the division of uh, youngsters is uh, today so that 58% uh, 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 it's go to the general upper secondary path and 42 go to vocational education. But the aim is to get this, the balance. Uh, and also if we see the highest uh, level of education. In 20 years ago, as the, uh, as the vocational education uh, and training was uh, newly set up, also uh, universities of applied sciences were uh, set up in our highest education system in order to provide to also the experts and professionals operating uh, in, in the working life and to have also uh, professionals who may reach the bachelor's and master's, master's level uh, through uh, the working experience. So the masters uh, studying at the universities of applied sciences need to have at least three years working experience in order to get into the uh, master's programs. So this is a separate part and ha it has been one of the uh, success stories in Finnish education system uh, to provide uh, opportunities for lifelong learning and opportunities to all of the citizens to find the right path and to, to op ability to grow to the best pot potential as was stated in our vision. Uh, finally, I would like to, in, in this part, I would like to also raise the idea of uh, liberal adult education. It's here stated that uh, also learning, learning for fun, learning new habits, learning new issues, uh, and not uh, always the certificates or degrees are needed. So in Finland there's a long tradition for adults to to, to learn in a, in a specific liberal adult education institutes. And that's uh, one of the field here also to support the kind of learning activities of our citizens. And of course open university and open uh, summer schools are one part of this sector. So uh, the system uh, uh, is now functioning quite uh, well, but it's also under continuous development. The latest and the next reform will be uh, made on the higher education. The new vision is stated in, uh, already in, in the strategy of higher education that half of the population will get, uh, half of the youngsters uh, eight, from age 24 to 32 will reach the higher education degree by 2030. And uh, this means also that the research and, and the academic uh, 
field will be uh, also looked uh, to be more individually uh, uh, concentrated education and also uh, the highest level of research will be in, in, the, uh, in the focus. Next I would like to uh, come back to how these reforms are then implemented. Uh, and uh, uh, this example comes from the K-12 education and also from early childhood education. Uh, in the left side, uh, we can see two booklets, National Core Curriculum for Basic Education and National Core Curriculum for Pre-Primary uh, and Early Childhood Education. Uh, in Finland, uh, we see that the curriculum process as such is important. So uh, even though the, na the national agency is responsible on creating these books, uh, and documents on curriculum, uh, the idea is that the schools, the teachers, the stakeholders can participate in the process on creating the curriculum, even the core curriculum on national level. So what we have done in Finland, we have used different uh, kind of uh, set of workshops collecting uh, in different parts in Finland from southern to northern part, from eastern to western part of Finland, uh, the group of teachers and principals and parents uh, to discuss on the issues on, on the curriculum. And also today, the digital tools have been used to, uh, for the participatory process in order to uh, have uh, the understanding on, on the regional and local level what will be there in, in the new core curriculum. And after that, when this process is ended and the curriculum is published, then uh, the next step is that the municipalities and cities make their own reflection of the national core curriculum. So as I said, they are autonomous, they are independent, but of course they, the uh, law also said they need to follow the national core curriculum as a framework for the localized curriculum. And then this process continues on the school level and the schools are able to create their own curriculum and plans and annual plans for their activities. And in this process, this uh, actually ensures that everyone is also able to participate in the process. And then, of course, the implementation becomes easier when you already have been able to participate in the process, then you also most likely will be committed to, to implement and use this new curriculum. And then in the classroom, the teacher has the autonomy to uh, uh, design the learning process in the best possible way. Uh, one of the highlights, so to say, in our newest national core curriculum has been this framework of so-called 21st century skills meaning we call them also transversal competencies. Uh, in a process on creating this new curriculum, also the idea is that the children need to get abilities uh, in the changing world, because we don't know what is the future like. Then we can provide just competencies on which everyone can uh, can be successful in the changing world. So uh, these seven uh, topics are the following. Taking care of oneself and managing daily life. That's one of the competencies. Then cultural competence, interaction and expression. In the global world, we need that this is very essential. Multiliteration meaning uh, the competencies to use uh, different medias and understand the content. 
and also uh, today we have seen that uh, understanding content is become more and more important because we know that uh, in the world the world is full of data full of uh, facts and quasi facts so uh, then it's important also that the children have competencies to also find what is the real knowledge and real uh, uh, information for their use. Then, of course, we have discussed also during this visit a lot of about digitalization. So, ICT competence means not only to handle some programs or uh, laptops or technology, but also to understand the change of the technology, to be able to use the newest technology. Then we come to the next one, working life competence and entrepreneurship. We see that in our society, we need also new enterprises and we need also entrepreneurial skills to our children in order to be also able to innovate. And that uh, is seen very important on all, of, all levels and all grades. In, in basic education. Then participation and influence, building the sustainable future. That has been, of course, raised from the mega trend of uh, climate change. Uh, that's one of the issues. And sustainability in, in the society also. And also there's in behind the thinking that uh, we want to raise our children to become uh, good citizens. And uh, they need this kind of competencies for that uh, growth. And then, of course, thinking and learning to learn, as was discussed also. This framework has been discussed a lot among uh, uh, our teachers and principals, because the idea how this framework will be used is that not that these are separate skills or separate subsets. But uh, the idea is that each, each teacher will use these competencies to be integrated in the learning process, no matter what the subject, what is thought is. It can be history, it can be mathematics, biology, and so on. But whatever you teach, you need to take into account that these competencies need to be there. And this has also raised the interest to use newest methodologies and pedagogical uh, knowledge, how this kind of integration can take place. And one of the ways how this, can, uh, this kind of competencies can be uh, integrated into a learning process is so-called phenomenon-based learning. This means uh, that uh, real-world phenomena can be a starting point. But the idea in Finland is that uh, this is uh, not this idea or theme which will create a phenomenon uh, will not come from the teachers. The idea is that the teachers are encouraged the children to discuss about the world around us and raise their interest for the phenomenon. So the main, uh, some of the phenomena which have been used in the schools have been, for example, just the, the climate change. That's something on which every child is very interested in uh, knowing also more and understanding the phenomenon. Or international cultures, in Finland also nature, forest, or sometimes also clear water. That kind of themes can be based for the learning setting in which the teachers can themselves design the learning process to, uh, for example, to, together to integrate different subjects to the phenomenon. Uh, in our national core curriculum, it is stated that each school need to have at least one week for this kind of setting on which uh, this kind of uh, wider themes are integrated into learning. And then phenomenal-based learning 
approach can be then uh, one of the tools for this integration. And also, uh, on which we have been very happy during the past few years, we have seen that our teachers and students are quite innovative. Uh, and also, as we all see that the technology is changing around us, uh, also uh, the digitalization in the school has been raised off for one of the topics. But teachers also in the classroom has become innovating together with the children. And I, I would like to share one of the latest projects we have had in, in the city of Helsinki and also in five other cities in Finland. Uh, there was a setting on which the teachers uh, were asked to discuss with the children in the classroom what kind of uh, uh, and how you would like to uh, learn uh, in the future if you would be able to use the newest technology and what kind of challenges you have faced in the learning in the classroom. So this kind of grassroot level innovation ideas where they then actually given to the startups on, on technological field. And then the companies, the startup entrepreneurs, and the teachers, and uh, students, and children joined forces and started to innovate. So there are many, many innovations raising now from this uh, new setting, raising uh, the interest from the classroom. And this is a kind of natural way to also promote digitalization in, in, in the schools. In this picture, we see actually two robots. Uh, and these ladies are teachers. And they are participating in a project in which uh, the teachers uh, have uh, created robots to support the learning in mathematics and in languages. So, uh, and today, actually, these robots are already there worldwide available. This robot calls, called Elias is uh, an assistant teacher in the classroom, and uh, it aims to activate children to communicate. And one of the results have been that especially, not only boys, but especially boys have been very focused on their learning when the robot has been in the classroom. And also we have seen, we have also discussed about adults and adults in the learning process and refugees and uh, all kind of uh, special groups uh, in the learning uh, processes. This uh, robot has been tested also among refugees, learning uh, also the basics in Finnish or English. And that has, the results have been very promising because the robot can continue and, and has energy as long as possible. And also it creates a new setting in the classroom. So this technology has been say, very beneficial when the pedagogical aspect is taken into account. So the technology and pedagogy need to be integrated. And in Finnish schools, in order to promote all the schools to use uh, digital tools, uh, a system uh, called digital tutors have been set up in, in Finland. So every school needs to nominate at least one, uh, in bigger schools, two digital tutors who are trained in digitalization and who have provided resources to train other teachers in the school. And that has been very resultful, this, this approach. We all know that teachers learn a lot in interaction with each other. And in the uh, normal school days can also can create a setting for learning. So that's uh, one of the examples how uh, educational innovations uh, have been 
uh, raised and, and enhanced in, in Finland. Uh, from our startups also, one of the most growing uh, sector is actually, actually educational technology. And that's, we are very happy on that uh, development because we also expect to get more and more educational uh, tools with support at the teaching and learning process. Because in most of these companies, there are teachers involved in the development process. And quite many times also teachers are founders uh, of, the, of the company. Finally, uh, in, in my presentation, uh, I would like to come more deeply to this topic of innovative and competent teachers. So uh, some aspects of Finnish teachers, uh, and uh, it has been also asked during our, our visit about how this teacher's education is, is set up. So there was this decision that all of the teachers are trained in universities and universities of applied sciences, and they will all have master's degree on all sectors of education. So uh, there you can see that there are some differences on the, uh, uh, on the educational uh, length, but the main aspect is that all of the teachers will uh, we reach uh, to master's level. So kindergarten teachers, class teachers, and also subject teachers from, uh, 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 from the uh, fourth grade on. There are specific subject teachers on specific subjects in, in the system. And also, as discussed, teachers in vocational studies and also not to forget also the principles. The educational management and the competent principles is, is uh, the only, only way to create sustainable uh, development uh, in the school level. And the, school, the success of the school is dependent on the, both on competent teachers and competent principles. And teachers feel valued also in, in Finland. As I started by saying that teachers have been the, one of the most important persons in, in, uh, in the villages or in the areas where the uh, schools have been set up, there's still this uh, approach that teachers' profession is very valued. 90% of the teachers are satisfied with their job. This is an OECD study. 70% would choose teaching again, uh, and 60% think uh, that their work is valued in the society. So, of course, this means that we need to keep very much focus on this aspect to, to have every teacher to, uh, to understand the importance. And, and that's, of course, always a question of the good uh, leadership and management in the, on the school level, and also from the governmental support for the schools uh, in, in this respect. And to come to the uh, two final part of my presentation, so some of uh, the secrets uh, of Finnish success, I would like to conclude on, on uh, some of the topics just to uh, share the ideas and continue the discussion. So the lifelong learning aspect, which was now set up in the system, and taking everyone uh, from, uh, from the earliest years to the senior years uh, of the citizens to the learning uh, and provide learning opportunities to all is one, one of the aspects. Teachers' competencies, management, competent management, and then uh, the idea that uh, there must be trust on, on the, all of the levels, otherwise this autonomy uh, aspect would not have been able to be given to the municipal level and the school level, unless uh, on the authorities and the agency level and politicians, uh, if they don't trust that the best can be done on, on this uh, local setting. Then the joy of learning and uh, 
the innovativeness is certainly needed. Uh, today, uh, we have also discussed many, many, in many, many ways how we could collaborate and find ways to uh, uh, also uh, learn from each other. I started by saying that education is all about co-creation and collaboration. So uh, today, for example, the six best uh, PISA countries Finland, one, one of them, are collected by OECD to share the best practices in education system in order to uh, also to uh, find new solutions for the world crisis in learning. It is truly said that there is a crisis in learning in the world. Almost every children in, uh, all around in globally can go to school. But what is the result and what happens in the school is the question. So we, we have seen that there's many, many ways uh, and many, many topics to be discussed and shared. And we have also many, many uh, uh, innovations which are also available to be shared so that it's not only copying, then it's not copying something from Finland to other country, but it's more like co-creating something new together and find best solutions together. So uh, in Finland we have been uh, supporting uh, quite many countries on educational reforms, kindergartens and schools uh, and teachers. And uh, we have happy to receive many, many visitors to Finland to, to see our schools and meet, meet our teachers. And our schools have been encouraged also to open the doors for the visitors to, to come and, and also to share and to learn. And also to, uh, I would say that there is a, a borderless uh, kind of opportunities on, on educational innovations. And that's something on which truly international collaboration is more than uh, wanted. And that's, uh, that's something on which we would like to also share the, the ideas. And of course, education is all about quality. The high quality education is something on which also quality assurance is needed. And that's, of course, a topic. Uh, on, in, in Finland also today. So these are some of the examples on, on how uh, we uh, today operate also globally. I would like to uh, finalize in, in some of the words uh, by saying uh, that uh, every country actually needs to create their own success story and understand the past, but more and more understanding that we can create something together for the future. So uh, in this sense, uh, again, it's all about co-creation, all about collaboration, it's all about uh, uh, sharing the ideas and uh, creating a better world together, because we really, truly uh, believe in, in that, that education is the way to change the world better. So uh, I would like to thank you very much and I, I'd like to thank you to be here in Jordania. This has been a learning opportunity for me so far and I think the next few hours will be a learning opportunity for all of us. So thank you. Shukran. Uh, shukran uh, Professor Lauri.